Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, a man that's got a fight coming up here at WFC 77 next week as he is going to have his rematch against Portland Pringle. Pringle. It is J.D. DiMaggio. J.D., man, as always, how's it going, man? Oh, going good, man. Thanks for having me on. How you doing? I'm doing very good. Uh, first off, I got to ask you, uh, did you get a big smile on your face when your manager called you up and said, Hey, look, unfortunately, we got an opponent change, but I think you're going to like the uh, the new opponent. Was it just a big smile? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is a fight that I've, you know, been wanting to get back for a while now. So, uh, yeah, I lit up when he uh, told me that. Well, you know, of course, uh, you lost to Portland back uh, in, in September of 2016. What What do you remember about that night? I mean, uh, you know, in terms of obviously you, you were you know, performed at the best of your abilities, but is there anything that really sticks out to you about that night? Uh, it was just everything that led up. The weight cut was horrible. Uh, you know, I'm not making excuses here. He beat me, but uh, you know, just a bad, uh, just a bad cut. Um, didn't have really any energy for the fight. You know, I just I'm, I'm excited to run it back uh, healthy and uh, get after. You know, get to really test myself this time. So uh, it's exciting. And you're back in Louisiana training uh, at Diamond Training Center there with Dustin Poirier. What what ultimately went to the decision of why to come back to Louisiana? Uh, just to come back as you know home base. You know I'm we're still uh, you know I still go out to American Top Team and do you know camps if uh, you know when, when it come when it comes up you know maybe the fight would come up. But uh, you know Dustin was coming back. He was opening up a private training facility. It was just it seemed like the right time to do it. You know I was out in Florida for four and a half years uh it's good to come back you know is it just one of those things of like at some point it's just like i just gotta go home is it kind of is it as simple as that uh yeah i mean when i first moved out there i knew i wasn't gonna live out in florida forever um you know it, it was great to be out there living day in and day out and i actually stayed a lot longer than i thought i would be out there you know uh i moved down in 2012 uh so yeah time flew you know it was <laughs> it's an awesome experience you know you know walt harris he recently left coconut creek he he mentioned about hey it's being back home and i i can get the more one-on-one attention was that part of the you know the thought process for yourself is knowing that you know being at where you're at now that maybe you get a little more one-on-one attention yeah you definitely get some more one-on-one attention and it's also you know it's good to just be back home around the family and you know, you get a little more, uh, you know, just more relaxed. And, you know, when you're going, when you're going to training sessions, you get a little more pumped up, you know, uh, you get pushed a little more. Cause like you said, you know, it's a lot more one-on-one. So you have a coach right there working on you hard, you know? So, um, yeah, definitely get some hard pushes out here. You know, they always talk about the evolution as a fighter from fight to fight. How, how would you say you're different now as opposed to your last fight? Just say, um, more hungry you know when we, last year you know I, i'd been winning fights uh you know for a couple of years and you know i guess uh getting that loss really kind of made me hungry again you know it kind of knocked me back down and it was time to you know it was time to really get serious and uh get hungry again and start pushing hard you know if that loss would not have happened do you think you would have this mindset Probably not, you know, uh, I guess I was getting a little relaxed with the training. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason, and I always mm-hmm. take, you know, my wins, I rarely learn anything off of them, but, you know, the losses, you learn a lot about yourself, how you rebound, how you come back, and, it's, you know, you either you could either just, you know, kind of give up, or you can uh, get, you know, get a fire lit up under you and uh, start training even harder, and that's what happened to me. You mentioned about no excuses. You know, you had a bad weight cut. Did, did, had did that experience cause you to change anything in how um, you know you get down to one seventy? Yeah, that's uh, you know I need to be coming in a lot, a lot lighter. I mean, that was, I mean, the day away and uh, after I was already drawn out, I, I cut another twelve pounds. Um, the day of weigh ins for the last one. I mean, that was that's like torturing yourself. Um, so yeah, just now now the diet's a lot more strict. Um, weight's low. I don't want to have to be killing myself. You know, I don't want to wake up the day away and have, 
you know, 12 pounds to go. I'll tell you that much. That, that was, that was horrible. Is the term of just being strict on your diet is just, just watching what you're putting in your body? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, no cheat meals, you know, no, uh, no sliding off that diet and eating a bad meal here or there, you know, it's, you gotta, you gotta stay serious. Just like you're training, you know, you wouldn't, mm-hmm. you know, if you've got, you've got five rounds of sparring, it's, you wouldn't do three and then just say, fuck it, I'm not doing the, the other two, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like that with your diet. You know, it's, uh, that's what I've learned. You know, you just have to stay, uh, strict all the time and you just can't, can't ease up on it. Are, are you the kind Especially of, if you're cutting a lot of weight. Are you the type of fighter like during fight week? Do you like torture yourself and like, like watch food programs? <laughs> I used to do that, uh, but it got to be too much, you know. <laughs> I, I've never understood. I, I, I hear so many fighters say that. I just never understood because if I was cutting weight, the last thing I'm like turning on is like Food Network or Cooking Channel and seeing some food that I'm like, God, I want to eat that. Oh, yeah. I used to uh, watch that diners drive in. Okay. Dives. Oh, man. During, you know, when I was, I'd be starving and I'd watch him, you know, he'd go. He'd drive to these, you know, different, uh, yeah. you know, restaurants and be eating all the stuff. Oh, man, that was, it was good. It was like I was living through him, but then um, it just got to be too much. <laughs> so no, no more Food Network. I mean, every time I go to Louisiana, it's good food. I mean, how, how do you stay away from that stuff? Oh, the food's amazing over here. Um, yeah, you you can't. I just can't have it around me. You know, uh, uh-huh. in my in my apartment, it's just it's the things. That are on my list for the diet, and that's it. There's nothing else. <laughs> so, so when you're hanging out at the apartment, what are you? What? What? How do you get your mind off the fight game? Um, you know, how to get mind off of uh, eating? You no, know, just just in my, you know, the, fighters always talk about you got to have like some type of hobby that just kind of get your mind off oh, yeah. the grind of you know the day in day out. I mean, what what do you do to just kind of get your mind thinking about other things? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm normally not, my mind's normally not too far away from the fight. Um, I don't mind that. I kind of like, I like to replay it in my head, you know, good, good positions, bad positions, you know, everything that could possibly happen in the fight. So, um, you know, I I don't step away too much from it. Do you think more about the bad positions than the good positions? Absolutely. Uh, you know, if you're in a, we all know what to do in a good position. Uh, it's it's you know maybe fighting through those bad ones that is uh, a little tougher. How do you see this fight playing out? I just uh, I just want to go in there and uh, you know lay it all out. You know, uh, let's go, let's fight. Uh, I see my hand being raised at the end. And of course, this is taking place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Do you at all feel any additional pressure fighting in your home state? Um, you know, I, I look at it like, you know, this guy's coming down to embarrass me and, and, you know, in front of my, uh, friends and family. So I can't let that happen. I'm, I'm ready to fight. They always say the guy that lost the first fight has the advantage in, in the second fight. Uh, I got to imagine you agree with that, but what other advantages do you see yourself having in this matchup? Oh, well, that, you know, it's, it's a hometown fight. You know, last time we fought in Arlington, Virginia, so we both had to travel for that. You know, now I'll be always sleeping in my own bed, you know, after weigh-ins. And so uh, that, that's always a good, a good deal right there, you know, just being, being on your, being in your own backyard. Have you all started to think about what could be next or is just like, you know, I, I don't look ahead. I'm just looking at, at Portland and that's all that's on my mind. Yeah. For right now, I'm just focused on him. You know, I need to, I need to get this win and uh, I'd like to get it. Uh, I'd like to get a stoppage, you know? So, um, that's what's on my mind right now, um, and afterwards, uh, hopefully, bigger fights come. Any preference, whether it's a knockout or submission? E- anyway, uh, you know, I train everything. You know, I'm, I'm always, you know, jiu-jitsu, boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, you know, so every, pretty good everywhere. You know, I, I train it all, so, uh, you know, it can end submission, it can end knockout or TKO. Anyone who has seen a picture of you, they'll, they'll see the you know, the tattoos you have on your body. Uh, what was the first tattoo you got, and when was the last tattoo you got? First one was probably uh, you know some tribal on my upper back, and the last one I got. Let's see, um, ooh, man, 
I think it was, uh, oh yeah, on the base of my neck. I got, I got a little something on there. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been getting tattooed for a while. Uh, it's, uh, I'm a serious collector for sure. Your manager is a, a serious collector as well. Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. Have... It does, and it's it's funny because you know, for as tattooed and as gnarly as he looks, you wouldn't expect that he's a guy that listens to a lot of disco music. What about Nickelback? <laughs> yeah, he listens to Nickelback <laughs> as well. He's a big fan of Nickelback. <laughs> Caleb torches him about it. Oh, I mean, you know, he's been keeping Nickelback alive. I mean, he's buying all their albums, you know, iTunes, he's blowing them up. So, uh, you know, my manager is definitely probably the number one fan of Nickelback. I heard there were several of his clients that were talking about coming out to Nickelback at a show just to basically terrorize them. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He, uh, that's funny. Now, would would you dare come out to Nickelback? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I, I think David. It's like he wants Nickelback all to himself. I don't know if he wants to share Nickelback, so I, he might be offended if I came out to some Nickelback. <laughs> do, do you have a particular walkout song all the time, or or you change it up just based on um, how you're feeling? You know, normally uh, if there's somebody in my camp that's you know giving me a lot of training, or or even you know just somebody uh that you know i see on a regular basis i'll let them pick i never really pick my walkout songs like you know hey if uh if somebody's going to go to the fight and they want to you know hear a certain song i'll let them pick i'll let them uh pick my walkout song is there a song on your phone that people would be surprised is on your phone that i would be surprised that that people who know you would be surprised if that song is on your phone um I don't know if they'd be surprised, but I mean, I listen to a lot of like older stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, I like Cat Stevens, uh, James Taylor. So maybe they'd be surprised if they, you know, heard some James Taylor coming on. Yeah, I remember because uh, I do some work at the NFL. We we had a kicker who who, who kicked for us, and uh, his uh, his song during his uh, warm up was always a party. Um, Miley Cyrus is uh, what's it? Party time in the USA, party city <laughs> in the USA. And I remember when he told me yeah. that I was like, "You're screwing me, right?" He goes, "No." He goes, "Seriously, here's my phone. It's it's right there." I was like, "Wow, would never expected that." <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've never heard, listened to any Miley Cyrus. But maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll check it out now. I I would I could only imagine if a fighter actually came out with that song, the reaction that fans would have in the building. That would probably be the most I'm sure entertaining they, part. I'm sure, a lot of laughter. But, of course, uh, everyone can follow you on social, social media. You're a great follow there on Instagram. Let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, after my name, J.D. DiMaggio. Uh, you can look me up, stay up to date with uh, everything that's going on with my fights and things like that. 